Alan, uh, you've uh, uh, discovered inflation theory. Some would say invented, but I'll keep with discovered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're now working on the measure problem with all the infinities uh, to, to solve some of the major problems. We have eternal inflation, which yields going forward a multiplicity, indeed an infinity number of universes. These are incredible concepts. When you, when you step, step back from all that and, and just, just look at your lifetime uh, achievements and ways of thinking. Uh, w w what are the big categories that, that you think about? Uh, well, I, I think the thing that amazes me most about my career in physics uh, is the fact that uh, when I started dabbling in cosmology, uh, the things that I was dabbling about all seemed unbelievably theoretical. Uh, we were doing things like trying to calculate the fluctuations of the cosmic microwave background radiation. Uh, and in those days, the cosmic microwave background had only been discovered about 10 years earlier, I guess. Uh, and uh, nobody had ever measured anything about the non-uniformities of the cosmic background radiation. And it really never seemed the least plausible to me that anybody would ever measure those things. <laughs> so when I was working on calculating it, there were a number of other people working on it. The only goal was to see if we could agree. <laughs> and to me, it was just an exercise, uh, just kind of a fun way of exploring theoretical physics. Uh, and now they're measuring these fluctuations to unbelievable precision. Uh, the world has completely changed in terms of, of what's being measured. Uh, and that totally flabbergasts me and has been just far more successful than I ever could have imagined. How about uh, uh, dealing with the, uh, the, the fact that there may be, in fact, an unbelievable number of similar pocket universes, as you called, and this potential infinity going forward? Just, yeah. How is it that reality is like that? <laughs> uh, right. Uh, well, it's certainly kind of mind-boggling that reality is like that. and. Uh, I certainly have heard some of my friends you know, say that they really get depressed at the idea that they're not unique, but one of an infinite number of themselves around the multiverse. Somehow, for some reason, that doesn't affect me so much. Uh, well, I, it's, I, I, I don't, it doesn't affect me at all, because that, that's not like me. That's like a twin. I mean, it's, it, it, yeah. every, every atom is the same. It's like taking a piece of my skin and cloning it. I mean, it, right. know, it, it, it's... Uh, well, I think I'm that's not, the way I feel, too. I, I, uh, I'm not sure that's meaningful, but the, the idea that, that it is so far beyond our conceptual understanding of even how big it is, is, mm. is uh, both awesome and frightening at the same time. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Uh, but, but I guess I would add that uh, the universe was frighteningly big uh, even before inflation. <laughs> um, you know, our solar system is, has a sun at the center. And the sun is one of, uh, as you probably know, 100 billion stars yeah. in our galaxy. And there was a time when we thought our galaxy was it, but <laughs> not anymore. Now there's 100 billion galaxies in the visible universe. Um, so that's already unbelievably, fantastically yeah. big. Uh, another uh, closely related, maybe spectacular fact about the universe is, is how small the density of matter is. Mm -hmm. Places like this, where the density is like one gram per cubic centimeter, uh, are incredibly rare in the universe. Um, and for the universe as a whole, the average mass density is only about 10 to the minus 30th grams per cubic centimeter. <laughs> what was it, like one atom per square cubic meter or something? It's something like one atom per cubic meter, that's yeah, right. That's universe. right, something like that. I forget the exact number, yeah. but it's on that order. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the universe is just unbelievably empty. And places like this are just unbelievably rare oasis. Uh, and this vast emptiness of the universe. How about the fact that uh, uh, human history in its total, or a few hundred thousand years, depends how you measure it, um, uh, recorded history, five, six thousand years, good science, uh, several hundred years, and really understanding science, maybe a hundred years, mm -hmm. in terms of quantum mechanics and general relativity, and yet we understand so much in such a short time. Yeah. How, does it, uh, yeah. how do you account for that? Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know how to account for it, but I, I completely agree with you. It's completely mind-boggling. Uh, and you compare that with the age of the universe, right. age of our pocket universe, I should say, which is 13.6 you know, billion years. Um, and it's just an incredibly tiny fraction where all of this has happened. And it really does mean that we're taking off at an unbelievable rate. And it's just uh, mind-boggling to think how one should predict 
what will happen in the next hundred years or the next thousand years or the next million years. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs>